Hey, everybody. My name is Neil, and uh, I'm a program manager with the Google Plus team. I'm also an author of this publication on Medium called Storytelling in VR. I hope you'll check it out after you hear what I have to say. So after the headset explosion in 2014, well, the headset announcement explosion, really, in 2014, <laughs> people started discovering a lot of applications for VR. I mean, gaming, education, sports, communication. And they're all good ones, but the one I want to talk about today is uh, movies, narrative entertainment. Thank you. <laughs> one person, thank you. Uh, but you all should be interested because, I mean, movies are big business. Uh, 2015 projected revenues for film entertainment, about 90 billion US dollars. And uh, these are projections the G Capital, take it with a grain of salt, but virtual reality revenues projected to be around 30 billion by 2020. Uh, movies are going to be a big chunk of that. A lot of that is gaming, sure, and headsets, but movies are going to be a big chunk of that. So a lot of people have been trying to figure out how to make movies on VR. It's not the easiest thing to do. But there's a bunch of studios uh, that have come up. There's uh, Oculus Story Studio. There's Felix and Paul in New York. Oh, sorry, they're in Montreal. Chris Milk is in New York, and uh, we've got our very own sort of ATAP studio. If you guys haven't seen Help, you have to. It's incredible. But there's a lot of problems sort of identified with making movies in VR. Um, people are trying to sort of apply the rules of movie making, and they don't really work well. I mean, in movies, st story is told through a frame. So if you have sort of two guys um, having a conversation, there's a framing shot, and then throughout the conversation, there's cuts to one person, then the next, and there's reaction shots and all that. And suppose an explosion goes off in the background, you know, they pan out and show you the explosion, and then zoom in, debris, aftermath, reactions, all that good stuff. It's all in the frame. The director tells you what to see and points the frame at it, and that's all you get to see. In VR, the viewer is in your environment. I mean, there is no frame. They're immersed in it. They don't know where to look. You don't know how to tell them where to look um, without cuts, how they're going to pay attention, if they miss a crucial bit of the action, what happens. I mean, what happens if there's an explosion and they're looking the other way? So let me tell you a story. A hundred years ago, the Lumiere brothers invented the camera, and uh, for the first few years, I mean, they were, they didn't really know what to do with it. I mean, there were little films like train pulling into a station, which was literally just train pulling into a station. Um, or there were market scenes, uh, scenes of everyday life, some slapstick comedy. And in 1903, um, this, this guy called Edwin Porter, he worked with Edison, he made a movie called The Great Train Robbery. It's a 12-minute movie about these four bandits who hold up a train, and they're killed in the shootout afterwards. It was remarkable for two reasons. One, it was the first complete story told on film. I mean, the, Edwin Porter invented a new sort of visual language for how to tell stories. He had cuts. He had cross-cuts between different locations. He had camera angles and movements and close-ups. And towards the end, there was a shot where the lead bandit essentially just fires a gun at the audience. And for somebody used to watching live plays, I mean, that's huge. I mean, somebody's firing a gun straight at you. But it was a movie. It was incredible. Um, and the second reason the movie is remarkable is because it kick-started the movie industry, the global movie industry we know today, with the Hollywood, the Bollywood, and all the other woods around the world. Um, <laughs> So indirectly, Edwin Porter is responsible for Star Wars, Game of Thrones, and Breaking Bad. So you got him to thank. Uh, let me, oh, there we go. So the VR movie really needs its train robbery moment. You need to figure out how to make this happen. Let me skip ahead a little bit. So what are the key elements of a VR experience? I'd say there are two of them. One is that it's immersive. You have a headset covering your eyes, your ears. Um, down the line, you could have bodysuits that let you feel what's happening inside the environment. People are coming up with treadmills and spheres and stuff like that. All these are accessories, and I know that you know a lot of consumers don't have them. But this is a vision talk, so I don't have to talk about practical considerations. You know, point is let 
content drive adoption. Make good movies and then people will buy stuff just to watch the movie. And the second one is interactivity. So it's, it's, it's great to be immersed in a scene, but it's not engaging unless you can interact with it in a meaningful way. And there's a lot of ways that we can sort of get, get signals from, from viewers. Uh, track their eye movements, uh, track their hands. If they say something, sort of see what they're saying. Um, maybe down the line you have sensors that can track temperature, um, you know, uh, blood pressure even, or heart rate, brain activity, I don't know. All of that could go into sort of customizing the experience just a little bit for every viewer. Now, I don't mean to say that, you know, um, it should be a game or a choose your own adventure kind of situation. That's not it. I mean, you're telling a story, there has to be an overall arc, there has to be conflict, drama, characters you can relate to, and you know, an inciting incident, escalating tension, resolution, and all that good stuff. But you can have interactivity in small ways. For instance, that conversation we were talking about, two people at a table. Now, what if you know, one of them or both of them occasionally glance across at this third person, the viewer, who's sitting at the table with them? Or um, you know, somebody cracks a joke and you know, nudges the third person, and that person feels it through their haptic bodysuit or something like that. You know, it's the little things that go towards you know, increasing presence and making the viewer feel like they're a part of the experience. Uh, another way we could do that, for instance, is you know, let viewers be a character in the story. Um, I just want to play this little clip for you. This is from a cutscene from the Arkham Knight. Watch this cop. He's gonna. He's our character, and as he walks towards the diner, the camera sort of swoops in, and essentially becomes him. You know, from that point on, you're seeing everything through his eyes. He's a character in the scene. The viewer is now a character in the scene. Other characters come up and like talk to him and stuff like that. I mean, this is. It's, it's just different ways of presenting the story. It's ideas, but I hope you guys will sort of all together come up with this new visual language that we need to make virtual, you know, virtual reality movies really compelling. Hang on, let me get out of this. This is stuck. Oh, there we go. Maybe don't go. Anyway, uh, point is, point is, the thing with movies and sort of movies today is that it's the same experience for everybody. It's filmed once, and everybody sees the exact same movie for as long as it's there. There is no, there's no, there's nothing customized to the individual. Of a virtual reality viewer has a headset on. It's a viewership of one. You know, we should be able to take this opportunity to sort of make it a unique experience for that viewer, have them come back and have different experiences every time they come back. So good luck, and <laughs> thank you.